Hello and welcome to another episode of the Build a Soil YouTube series. Today we have season six, episode four, and we've got a lot to update. You'll notice the plants are a lot bigger than the last video. And the reason why is because it's been two weeks. I left on vacation and part of the benefit of the auto pot is that you can turn it on and automatically water. But when I left, the plants were pretty small. I did not want to overwater them. So we did not turn on the reservoir and the crew here, Dave behind the camera, watered the plants by hand. And so all we've done is water only except for root wise and we're about to get into it. So let me show you the differences. Some of the things that may have happened as it's very, very hard to compare two auto flower seeds. So the whole time you watch this, I don't want you to think of this as a side by side. Think of this as how to grow an auto flower this way. We're talking about the environment, all those things that we've covered. So you know what to do, but I have this hypothesis about problems that you can get into with auto flowers. They're a little bit pickier. If you stunt them or if you cause a problem, they can really derail the grow. And so we'll just be highlighting what I see between our two soil recipes. Um, that being said, I still have some work to do. The auto flower soil recipe, the version that came back, the soil testing profile wasn't perfect, a little higher on pH and a few things that I see that I could tweak. So what I'm really interested in is the texture of the soil and the top dress kit that we've made. And we'll just document what we see. We're not going to release this product until we've really tweaked it, but I want to address that up front. Let's get in there. And let's look at these plants. Today's day 35 since the day we put the seed into the cocoa coin, not since they popped up. So it took a few days, right? Four or five days. I forget how many on the seeds that we chose, but today's day 35 since that dry seed was put directly in there. The one on the right is in the auto flower recipe, the guest recipe that we're making to test. And what we're really testing is a higher amount of drainage so that it widens the margin of air for watering. So if you're new, you want to run auto flowers. We want to design a soil so that you can keep it basically fully wet without fear of overwatering. So you never derail your auto flower, but it will dry out slightly faster. And so the auto pot's perfect for this type of soil. And so we're going to see what it does when we turn the reservoir on today, we're going to hook up the reservoir. So right here behind the tent. I know the lighting isn't the best. I've actually got the reservoir right here. And so this is just the standard reservoir they sent to me when I ran the first auto pot. I've got a bigger reservoir, but I want to use that for the tray to grow. And we'll do that in another video where we, where we set up the flexi tank that they sent to us. This has just got a lid on it. I fill it with water and it's got this tube and this is how I had it on my last run. So I may shorten this, not sure, but we'll do that on camera together today. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up. So water gets in there and then we'll be fully automated. And I'm also going to top dress today. And I'm also going to put the AC infinity four by four trellis net up. I've not used one of these before, so it'll be a first for me. Customer feedback has been great. We've carried them for a short period of time. So I really want to use it. I like to only offer stuff that I use and while I trust the company, it'll be a first one for me. We're going to put that in right now because this plant's starting to get taller and I don't want this to grow into the light. I want to start to bend them out so that we fill up this tent properly as I still see a lot of stretch to come. Being day 35, they are starting to go into flower. But while I was gone, since we weren't on the auto pot um, system yet, we were hand watering over holidays while I was gone. There was two times that there was 48 hours where nobody even interacted with the plants from a Sunday and Monday. We had a holiday day off. And so this one could have gotten a little bit dry down faster than our normal build a soil light recipe. And that possibly could have triggered it into flower. I see some slight yellow tips on there, nothing too major, but it does look like maybe it's slowed down on nutrient uptake for a period or availability. And it's possible that that triggered it as I'm seeing a little bit more stretch in here. That's why it looks bigger. So I don't think this soil is winning. I just think it's possible we triggered it a little early. And obviously that's what we're hoping to avoid by creating a soil, but I did have to leave. I did leave and now it's time to hook up the reservoir and we'll just be watching the whole time. Now the build is all light. It's just killing it. We haven't hooked up the reservoir, so we've just been properly watering. And of course, if you were to overwater or underwater, it could be different results than this. That's part of why we want to try and make an auto flower recipe, but I'm not going to force it if it doesn't work. We're just going to do what works the best and that's it. And so I've got a top dress. We're going to apply to both and I'm going to keep this run very simple. I'm not going to like cover crop and mulch and all the stuff that's part of the build a soil way. While I really like it, I'm going to top dress and I'm going to defoliate and use my own leaves to create that mulch layer. And that's it. I'm just going to keep it as low key as possible so that if you're watching this, 
you learn how to set up the environment, how to dial in your grow light, how to keep air movement, all the most important stuff, humidity, all of it. But then as far as the grow goes, we're just gonna hook up the auto pot and basically let it run. Top dress, monitor, and we'll update as we go. So I've got this I wanna hook up. I'll do that towards the end so that I can get in there in the meantime. I'd like to just turn the auto pot on right now. So let's discuss that. I've got one of these already has a module in it. You can see the tube sticking out. I already ran this one and then I cleaned it all out. So that one's already set up. What I need to do for that one is just hook it up to the main reservoir, but I wanna hook them both up. So when you get it, it comes in a kit and it has the instructions for how to hook it up. If you've got questions, we're here to help and so is Autopod, they're great. So I'll show you that real quick. They have a, a drawing on it. So it's just the valve right there on the top. So I'm gonna investigate that before we set it up. I've got some tubing. I've got the actual valve and some parts that come with it. And on the valve, what they're talking about is this blue piece of silicone that's right here. It's hard to see probably on the camera, but it's going to cover this hole here and it needs to fully cover it so that it's perfect. So I'm just investigating that, like they say, to make sure that that is fully covering and it looks absolutely perfect. So I'm not going to make any adjustments. They do say to just push on one side if it wasn't seated. Looks like we're good to go. So I'm not gonna take it any further. I do wanna go ahead and set this up. And so on the instructions, it's pretty clear. There's two steps here. One is we're gonna put this float valve in the module. The next step is we're gonna connect the water to it and then fill it, the reservoir with the water. So if you have a whole bunch, they kind of give you a flow for how to design it. With two, I just need to split the line into two and it's super easy. If you have a bigger design, you can go ahead and plan ahead for that. What they do is they have step-by-step. -step. So I don't expect you to follow this, but when you get it, you'll have your step-by-step -step directions and they explain how to put the rubber grommet in, put the tube through, then you're gonna connect your aqua valve, then you're gonna pull it back through, seat it properly and you're done. So I'll do that live right now with you, but you'll have instructions and it's super easy. Um, and then last, when we hook up the reservoir, we just did the standard fitting. They do have really nice quick connect fittings that we're using on the tray to grow that you can hook up to here and have it quick connect and like they've got all the parts, it's awesome. I'm just doing the very basic version, okay? So we'll discuss that when we hook this up. For now, let's get to the first step. The tubing comes with it. So you can just open this, cut it to length, whatever you want. So let's grab the aqua valve. I've already checked that it's seated properly. Now you can take the plant out. I already have it in there and you can do this at eye level. It doesn't have to be like on the grow room floor, but that's what we're working with. And so essentially this is gonna come off and that just clamps it down. Now I've been told these tubes work really great. So as long as they're on there, this clamp's not a huge deal, but it really will, will, will fully seat it. And so what we wanna do is put the rubber grommet in here and it's got a hole in it that allows the tube to go through. And so I'm just gonna put the rubber grommet right in here Goes on the side, I'm not sure if you can see that very well with the camera, kind of probably hard to see, but it's a pretty snug fit. So you just need to work it in a little bit and then it goes straight in, it seats really nice. So now I've got the float valve and I wanna connect it, but I don't wanna seat it in there first, I want the tube in. So they instruct you to put the tube through. Okay, I'm gonna get some extra length there so it's easy. And then I'll put this black cap over so that when I hook this up, it's easy to pull back on. Now it just goes over the nipple there on the end. Make sure it's all the way flush. So you can see how it's all the way to the threads. Maybe a little hard to see. And then I will pull this and screw it tight so it holds that connection. Hand tight, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna make sure that's seated and I'm gonna pull this slowly back through. Now the directions. Um, they talk about this half moon shape back here, right here. There's a half round, they call it like a half moon, and it has a connection that it seats into. You'll see it on your auto pot, but it's right down there and I wanna make sure it's clicked in so that it's held in place. That means everything's seated in the right location and it can't move. We're backed out, everything's in, that is now hooked up. And you can see roots already coming through here from the water we've been doing by hand. When we set this up, water's gonna be there all the time and it's gonna put a lot of roots down there. So on um, the last thing that I have to do before I turn this on, is actually put the copper blocker in the bottom so the roots don't grow into this system. And so I'll set that up in a second. I did want to mention that because I just tossed it in here without that as we were just getting started. So I'll do that before I turn it on here in a second. In fact, let me just 
grab that copper blocker, I'll put it in and we're gonna set this up properly. So, all right, so here's what I didn't put in in the beginning and I don't want you to forget it. So I'm trying to make sure it's on video is these are the root blocker. They work either way, it doesn't matter, but obviously it's kind of fitted to be like this on the bottom of the AutoPot XXL. What happens is so many roots grow out of there, this blocks the roots from growing through. If they grow through there, they will chase right to the water source and they'll clog it up. So it's best to have this root blocker in there and then you won't have any issues. So I'll do that and we'll set up the reservoir. Grab this real quick. Kind of rolling it just to make it easy for myself. I may have to rework it a little bit. Wow, that's really pretty out here. Build a soil light is just crushing it. I'm just gonna go around and pull the sock up so that it's actually blocking the roots. There we go. It's pretty good. Make sure it's all the way around. If you do this when you fill your container up, you won't have to wiggle it like I'm doing, but it all works. It's all done now. You can set these any way you want, right? But they both come out of the left side. So I just turned this one. So now it's gonna be easy for me to make a, a union right here to go to the reservoir. So don't pay too much attention there. It's more about just fitting it in your tent. So there's even spacing. Let me get this last one in there and then we're gonna set the reservoir up right now. Almost done. Let me just get this last edge done so I don't forget to do it later. Good, so we've got the whole root blocker all the way around. Now we just need to set up the reservoir. And so obviously you put the root blocker on right away, no problem. I was leaving, really wanted to get this set up. So we kind of did it in a couple steps. So now, if you've got a whole bunch of them, you can fit a larger main line and then use that larger main line to tee off to these small lines. And so they provide like a main line with a small off of it, lots of different parts. So there's many ways to build this. I'm just with two of them, it's so easy to do this. So I'll connect it here. Okay, connect it here. Awesome, now the last thing I need to do is connect it to the reservoir and fill it up. And we're gonna have the reservoir pretty close. And it's gravity, but you know, it's watering down low. So as long as the water level is above that tray, the gravity will get it there and it's fine and I'll be keeping this pretty full. And then I wanna put it in the tent and there's an opening in the side of the tent right here. So I can put it through, but man, I don't need that much. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in line so that I can turn it off if I need to. So I'll do that right now. I'm just gonna grab some scissors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave myself a little slack in case I do wanna move the reservoir around a little bit or move the pots further away or anything like that. I don't wanna be so locked in. So from there to there, I'll just leave a little extra slack. I'll cut right there. And then I've got this side. I'm gonna flip it, put it in. Now I've got an inline valve. I still don't need that much length. So I'm just gonna cut it right here. And now I can run this inside the tent. There we go. And then we just connect it. These tubes are so easy to work with. It's very, very easy. I'm guessing this isn't quarter turn. Let me see if it is. It is, so it's quarter turn, it's just directional. So that's off, that's gonna be on. We'll double check when we hook up the reservoir and let it flow. That's it, we're hooked up. All I have to do is add water in here. Now when you first get it, they're gonna give you a few different parts. The most basic is you just put this little filter on there. You put that on the inside, you run it through, and now you're connected. And if any debris gets in your water, it gets collected here instead of being sent through the system. Otherwise, if you're doing like hydroponic fertilizers and all sorts of stuff, they make big filters for it so that you can fertilize right through here without clogging your system. Um, the Build-A-Soil way, good soil, lots of volume, which the AutoPot XXL works with and no fertilizer input in the bottom. So we're just gonna have this basic filter in there, just in case something falls in the reservoir, it won't go down the line, and that's it. Mine is already in there, it's already installed. So we're ready to fill the reservoir. I've got a filtered water here on the hose through a big boy filter. And so we don't use RO water, I just like to do filtered water. We can talk about that another day, but I feel like number one, RO is pretty wasteful. Number two, it takes everything out. We don't like to have water that's completely devoid now. In this setup, I don't think it would really hurt using RO, but filtered water is what I use and that's what I'm sharing with you. I'm going to take the lid off and just start to fill. Now, let's see. And my reservoir has to get above this high before it's gonna start flowing in here, just because of gravity. And so, let's open that up. There we go. Here's the water. Both of them are hitting the same time. We now have enough water to go over this height. 
then drop back down as long as I keep my reservoir at about fuller than that amount of water. Once it's primed, it can go a little bit lower than that, but it's best to keep my reservoir full. I can always put it up on a, on a box or on something just to keep the reservoir a little higher, but with two like this, they're not gonna be going near that reservoir even through stretch, so I'll be able to keep up with it. I'm just gonna monitor this the first time, so I'll put these back on. When it's been a little while, I'll come back and check and make sure it's stopped at the right height. But we're officially automated, thanks Autopot. I love running these things. I never thought I'd use something like this with living soil, and they go so well together. Autopot was really generous, and they sent me a customer of theirs that was using a different brand of soil and using Autopots, and while I wasn't you know, an expert on auto pots at all. I just told him what I would do with soil and he used it and he's using our 3.0 and it's just killing it, doing a really good job. He's not growing auto flowers, just growing auto pots on a commercial scale. But I'm beginning to see, you know, more uses for these and so it's really fun for me to play with. And the XXL has been my favorite. The last round was so easy. And I know that our commercial customer, he uses the plastic small ones and then has to lift the soil off the bottom. Where in the fabric ones, they make it so easy for me in the auto pot. So for a home grower, these fabric pots made it so that there was no like anaerobic like lockout from too much water. But I really think if we get this auto flower soil right, it's going to kill it in the auto pot. So we're just going to keep pursuing that. I'm seeing the water. It looks like it's about stopped at the right level. So I'm going to cap this up here so that we leave it dark and we leave it so that no debris can get in there. And then we're going to move on to the last couple of parts so we can wrap this video up. What I want to do before I forget is we're going to go over the lighting and just discuss that really quick. Then I'm gonna get in and do a light defoliation and a top dress, water it in, and then we're basically set now. And we're gonna update much more often than I have been since this, this video was a two week gap. I did take photos, Dave took photos while I was gone. So I'm gonna have Dean put in the YouTube video photos of the progress, at least so you can see them get bigger for the last two weeks up until this point. And then we're gonna be documenting in here once or twice a week for sure to make sure you get every step of the way and we'll be sure to tell you what day the seedling is on from the autoflower so you can kind of track along. Let's, let's talk about the lighting real quick. I've got a laser that I left out of the last video, so I wanna grab it so we can read the uh, leaf surface temperature. Talk about that for a minute, and then let's read the lighting intensity. So on the Build a Soil Way, we talk about the VPD in the introduction. I went really over the environment in here, and we're running it low tech. So I don't have like a Niwa or anything that I'm running it. It's just on the AC Infinity, controlling the fan based on temperature. So my whole goal was to set the temperature where I know the light is gonna go above the temperature. Then the exhaust fan kicks on and it, it brings the hot air out. That cools the tent, but it's always bringing fresh air in every time it does that. And we've got the little oscillating fan blowing the air around in here. I've got the humidifier in the tent. If I had four plants in here, I'd probably move the humidifier out of the tent and use the big tube that they use. But the tube kind of leaks because the, the humidity builds up in there. So I'm gonna leave this in here and I have some ideas. I'll probably leave it in under the scrog screen the whole time and just turn the direction, but I can also change the height, right? And just lift it way up. So now I can lift the humidity so it's not blowing straight at the plants. But when I put my scrog screen in, I'll probably actually wanna keep it low and change the direction. So for now, I'll just leave it like that so you can see what it looks like. Let me grab my laser I dropped. Getting back to what I was trying to say, we base the VPD based off the leaf surface temperature. So I'm getting a reading at 63 degrees right now, which is pretty cool. I've had the tent open the environment's a little cooler in here. But what I was getting at is it's like 68 in here, but with the fan going and the humidity, it drops the temperature. So if I just went off of this reading and said 67, but here I'm getting 62 point something, then I'd be basing my numbers wrong. So when, if you have a thousand watt double-ended light, like old school, you would read it and it would read warmer than your tent. You'd base VPD off that, and then you wouldn't, wouldn't want to overdo it. But here, what a lot of people do is they think they're in a great temperature, they base VPD off of it, and really they might be eight degrees, five degrees, six degrees cooler than they think because LEDs don't really heat the leaves up. The heat goes off the top of the LED light. So with that being said, if your environment, if you're wanting to dial it, you don't have to use this. If you're using LED, you could just go a couple degrees cooler as far as an offset, but it's nice to use the leaf surface temperature to get the reading to base your VPD. And I wanted to mention that. So that's why I brought that out. Lighting is what I want to talk about next. So we were on 24 hours of light. We're going to be at 20 hours of light. I don't have like an auto flower schedule. I just think 20 hours is probably ideal. A lot of people run 24, but to me, the plants can take it, but the soil benefits from that dark time where the plants 
send their root exudates back into the soil and communicate with it. So I'd rather be at 20 hours of light. I'm sure I could do 18, but for auto flowers, it seems most efficient to do about 20 hours of light. So that's what I'll be doing. And if you recall in our previous video, we talked about DLI. DLI is daily lighting integral. And that's a measurement of the power of the light or the PPFD at a certain distance, the, the PAR. We wanna calculate that over how many hours the light is on. So what I'm gonna do is on 20 hours of light, I wanna be around 600 PPFD. That'll give me about a 43 DLI, which is in the range for flowering, which we're starting to do now. So let's see where we're at. We're at 300. That's about where I wanted to be at for veg. But since we're going into flower, I can increase the DLI. So I'm gonna ramp the light up a little bit, especially now that we have unlimited water down there. I'm not scared to ramp it up. And we're about to give more food, so I'm not scared about that either. When we go with more lighting, there needs to be more everything else, because now it's like we're asking them to run. We need to make sure it's all ready for it. So 450, five. So I need to go a little bit more powerful. That's about right. So fully powered, we're about 600-ish across the board, just but maybe a little bit below. So 580 to 615, somewhere in that range, which is perfect because that's gonna provide enough warmth for me to really get these plants to drive and get the biology warm in there. I don't want it 65, 68 degrees. I want it to be closer to 80 degrees in here. And so if I zip up the tent, it was getting 75 up to 80, but now that that's running, it's gonna get over 80 easy. And then the fan's gonna run and that's gonna move more fresh air with more CO2. Then they're gonna drink more water. Then they're gonna be accessing that food from the warmth and the soil biology. So we're keeping it all going. If you're in a winter run in your garage and you can't get the temps up, maybe lower the light a little bit lower than our target DLI because your plants might outpace your soil's ability to provide those nutrients. Or you can supplement with some water soluble nutrients. Since I don't wanna supplement at all, we're just gonna keep things nice and warm and do our best to control that. So we are now at max power. We're at 600 PPFD, which puts us in that 43 DLI on 20 hours of light. And I think that's gonna be perfect all the way through flower. If I want a little more potency, I could either lower the light or I could wait for the plants to grow into it as the par is much higher as we get closer. And it does change quite a bit. So we'll monitor that as we go. If they get closer, I may actually have to dim the light and we'll discuss it. For today though, that's everything I wanted to cover except for top dressing and trellis netting. So let's get that done so we can wrap it up. I'm excited about this trellis net, but first I wanna talk about the top dress. So I built a new top dress kit, and the main reason is for auto flowers, in a soil, if we design the soil right, where the nutrient profile is very balanced and it's impossible to overwater, I think more auto flower growers will have success because they'll germinate their seed, they'll put it in there, and it won't be burning the plant because some auto flowers are really picky, some aren't. And then, We'll make it so that you don't overwater on accident based on the texture of the soil. And that'll eliminate a lot of stunting that can happen with an auto flower, which you can't come back from. Like in a regular photo period plant, if you stunt it a little bit, you just veg for a week longer, let it come back and nurse it up. And all you wanna do is be super healthy before you flip the flower. But with auto flowers, if you mess it up in the beginning, you're not getting it back. It just triggers in a flower and now you're even further ahead than you wanted to be. So I think if we can get that right, it'd be a big difference. Now. The top dress, the main difference, like craft blend is my go-to, and I really still think that's the way to go. But what it is, is the craft blend is based on building a Steve Solomon complete organic fertilizer. We have a free report online at our Build a Soil blog. You can check that out and you can download it. It teaches you how to make your own complete organic fertilizer. This is something similar. And it's not like I need a soil test to tell me, similar to the human diet. You know if you've got like a protein and some veggies and something with micronutrients like berries or whatever, you're getting your complete diet. And if you're healthy, that should be more than enough. Here, we wanted to design the complete diet, but the main difference for the autoflowers, if you're a newer grower and they're really fast growing, we wanna have a super fast release. So look how it almost moves like water in there. Like it, it, it's hard to see, but it like flows. It's really interesting in the bag, the texture. But this is super micronized sprouted seeds. And on top of that, we added in some kelp and some fish bone meal, and I'll go over all the ingredients, but really we build a complete organic top dress that's almost water soluble. It's not a water additive, it's still for top dress, but that'll allow it to take into your soil much quicker so that you don't have to predict the timing and a normal no-till grow where we're going round after round after round. You're gonna get that top dress eventually. On auto flowers, they're so demanding so fast. We just wanted something that's a little bit more plug and play for the grower that wants to run auto flowers. So that's what we're trying. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna go pretty hard. I'm gonna do this. I think that is half a cup. So I'm gonna do a half cup per plant and we'll just monitor it as we go. The Build-A-Soil light already has some nutrients, so we'll see what it does. 
and we'll be learning as we go. So half cup, I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna sprinkle it all around in a circle. There we go. And then before I water it in, what I'm gonna do is defoliate some of these lowers. Now what's so cool is you can see the original two leaves right here. Original, the cotyledon still on there from when the seed popped. That's health, that's what I'd like to see. Over here you can still see the same thing. Here's the original leaf. And I don't think you can see it, but that little brown right there, that's the original cotyledon right there where my finger is. Those first two like fake leaves that pop out from your seed. It's really cool to see it still intact. The plant is just so healthy. So water's in, you can see the plants are now drooping. They're drinking. I was gonna water them, but I held off because I knew we were turning the reservoir on, but now they're starting to drink. It's pretty cool, so. I'm gonna defoliate some of this down here. I'm not gonna be exact about it, but I'm just removing some of this lower layer and you can kind of rip them, do whatever you want, but I'm gonna throw it on top of that top dress. And it's gonna provide some shelter for the soil and shelter for those roots to come up and eat that top dress without being exposed to the light. And I think that really works well. I also take off some of the inner branches here as I don't believe they're gonna produce, like this little branch. It's not gonna jump up to the top and I'm gonna put a scrog screen on here. So let me grab some scissors. I'm gonna do a decent job on this one to show you what to do. I'll spend my own time doing the next plant. The scissors right here. Now, if this was a photo period, I would take these as clones, but since they don't clone, can't do it. Other thing is in between here where they connect, sometimes I remove some of this, they're not walling in together, but I'm just gonna leave this branch here until we see what it does. Now we've done this in a lot of other videos. If you wanna watch them, auto flowers, it's no, no real difference. We're just trying to shave the legs up here. What I'll do at the end is I'll spread these leaves around evenly and chop them up a little bit. We're probably gonna do another big defoliation once the scrog screen has been on for a little while. I like to clean up everything below the scrog screen, but I don't wanna overdo the defoliation on these auto flowers in the first go. And I just wanna teach you that, hey, like we don't need all these leaves down here when the light's flat and up above, so. If you're using your fingers like I do sometimes, just be sure to pinch and make sure you get it off before you pull. You can pull the whole branch off. And we're growing our own mulch, didn't have to buy anything. I love like the straw mulch and all those, but we're growing this right here. You can just put it right in your container and you've got free mulch. So the idea with the straws, you get the greens and the browns and you kind of make soil in your pot. But I just want to keep it simple. So we'll just chop some of these up in here. The top dress is in there. And we want to get the feeder roots ready to receive this top dress. It's so cool, once the food's up there and the leaves are there, the roots will start to feed on that. If we need to top dress again, the feeder roots are ready and they will immediately take that micronized food right into the plant. It's really cool to see. So um, that's good enough for now. I could go a little more aggressive, but I really just wanted to highlight the principle that we need to get these legs all cleaned up, up to a certain height. And as we put the screen on, we may come up a little more as we see which branches jump up versus others. I've done no structural like canopy control and they're pretty bushy. Typically plants follow their roots. So now that it's kind of matched the size of the container, they'll probably grow up from there. But when I put the scrog screen on, what'll happen is I'll stop, slowly start bending, and that'll allow these lowers to come up faster. And so we should fill out this tent a little more than if we just let them grow tall. So that's kind of the idea, push some of their growth horizontally instead of just vertically. So we've got that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I don't forget, I'm gonna top dress right now, but I'm gonna defoliate once we turn the camera off half cup for this side. You could scratch it a little bit into the soil. That way you get like soil contact with it and it's not just sitting up there raw. You don't want it to be dry, right? I'll kind of do the same thing here. Just like with the craft blend, I just kind of loosely work it so that it's not just sitting in a pile. There we go. I'm gonna get the scrog screen on then I'll talk about the water and we'll end it with this. So I've got some root wise and one other item. So give me a minute. So you have hooks, rings, right? And you have these Velcro, which will go around the pole and then you have the actual net. Let's open it up and see what we're working with. I'm sure a lot of you have done the same thing at home and figured out how you like it. So if you have feedback, let me know. Otherwise, you know, it's not rocket science. We're just putting a net above the plant. So I'm gonna loop it through. I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm just doing the basic hook setup for now. I may adjust it later. I'll tell you what I end up doing. And I'm gonna go to the back without like putting it on the plant. I'm gonna put it behind. Those fit really nice on the pole. So I, I can adjust the height later, but I want it to be about this height and hook it, same height. 
And I'm gonna move this to the corners and see how well it, how tight it is. Okay, well that's the AC Infinity Trellis Net. We're gonna use it this time. So it is what it is. You can see it's touching here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower it just a little bit so we can start right now. Okay, so now what I can do is I can bend these. I'd love some feedback on this. We're always trying new things. Um, other than that, I got it all set up. So I'm gonna talk about the watering and we'll just leave this and we'll tuck it and we'll go and we'll see how it works. I've still got to defoliate that one. So I'm just gonna mix my water. I'm not gonna water it on camera or anything. There's nothing really you need to see, but I did want to show you what I'm gonna mix today. I've got something new. We've carried these in the past, but I kind of brought them back because I want to highlight the importance of different ingredients. There's no one size fits all. You don't have to do it a certain way. If you live in another country, you don't have access to all this. You can find one of these ingredients. So this is soap nut water and it's super sap and rich. I just had about six different soap nut shells in this little bag and I just soaked them in there overnight. I'm going to take it out. Soap nuts come like this. We offer them at Build-A-Soil. They come a kilo at a time. So this will last you a really long time. It's very affordable. And then I just let it soak overnight and it makes a super soapy water, just like using the Kiyaha. Now, if you didn't want to let it soak overnight, you could boil it, make a concentrate. And you could just add a little bit of this to your water and it makes it super strong and sapping in. Otherwise, of course, we have the Kiyaha 20 and the Kiyaha 60, which are saponins. Now what's cool is soap nuts have a different type of saponin. So there's, if you look at the white paper research on all of them, different chemical structures from the Kiyaha tree versus the soap nut berry. And these are straight from Nepal where they grow wildly. So it's all wild harvested, which is pretty cool. So this is a saponin rich water I'm gonna to use to add to my watering today. We also have from Usha at Neem Resource via India, a soap nut powder, basically those same soap nuts just ground into a powder so you can use it without straining it, soaking or anything. I like the original soap nuts. You can use them um, at your house for laundry, four to eight shells in one of those bags tossed in your laundry is good for four loads. So you can just keep on using it over and over. Lots of uses. And again, the living soil to build a soil way is becomes a lifestyle. It crosses over from just the garden to other parts of your life. We eat healthier. We use less chemicals, become less dependent on things. So soap nut, really, really cool. Three different forms. I'll show you just for fun right now what the whole seed looks like. It comes with four of these bags so you can steep your own little teas or use them for washing clothes in your house. And they're just wild harvested and they're de-seeded. So that's what we're using today. And the main reason is it'll help make sure that that top layer of soil, since we're now bottom watering, is nice and evenly moist. And I want to moisten all that top dress that we did. The other thing is I want that top dress to release. So I'm going to add a little bit of RootWise. I've got the RootWise Biofoss since we're going into flower right now. And I'm going to make probably half a chapin full as I don't need much water since I'm bottom watering. And so I'll get that started. We'll add this and we'll call it a day. We'll wrap this up. I'm doing a gallon and a half. So I'm probably going to do like a teaspoon in here. And that's a pretty strong dose. So you don't need much of this. It's a really, really potent product. In fact, I'm going to add it right into here, dump it in here and top it off with the hose. So you can measure exactly if you want. I'm just going to eyeball a small amount. It's about a teaspoon right there. And then normally I would add, um, three to five mils per gallon. And I would normally do like 15, 20 mils in there. But since I'm going to do half of it, I'm just going to do a splash like 10 milliliters. So the reason why I'm adding the enzymes in the biology is it's going to immediately go to town on those dry amendments and liberate the nutrients so the plant can, can take them up. And that's what I want. Nice and foamy from the soap nuts. Oh yeah, same filtered water we use in the reservoir. I'm gonna add about three quarters of a gallon of each. Then from there on out, I'm just gonna let the bottom watering do it. If I notice it's getting a little dry on top, we'll mention that in the video and we'll hit it with a little top watering from time to time, but we may not have to. So we'll just document what we find as we go. That's about a gallon and a half, which is what I wanted. Okay, I've got my one gallon per minute nozzle so that I can spray across that whole mulch layer. It's not full, so I want to pump a little more air, give it a good shake. That's it. Okay, so I could sit here and water, but I need to defoliate that one and I want to water them both. So we're going to wrap this up. We've got everything ready. The scog screen is on. So if this one really starts to blast, which you can see it's starting to flower now, we're ready. So I can start bending. I can get this to stay at this height the whole way. 
Um, I mentioned the humidifier. I may drop it back down, but either way, we'll talk about that in the next episode. And in the next episode, I won't have so much to do so I can kind of revisit where we're at on the environment and discuss some of those parameters. Otherwise, like usual, if you haven't already done so, we're age restricted usually. So it's really helpful if you go click the subscribe button right now. And that way you get notifications when we drop videos. It also helps the, helps the algorithm. The more subscribers we have, YouTube thinks like, well, they may have something that's worth watching. So they'll maybe push our videos out to more people. And when you're age restricted, they rarely do that. So it's really helpful if you subscribe. Otherwise, like, comment, tell your friends about this stuff. And as always, if you've got questions about anything we did today, the lighting cycle, the top dress, the soil, any of it, drop them in here and we'll pick through your questions for our frequently asked questions videos. And remember, season six, this is just the beginning. By the time these are done flowering, we'll have already popped seeds. And if you bought some of the seeds, I heard we sold out through Dominion Seed Company, the uh, strawberry deluxe that we're gonna be running. So a lot of you are gonna pop on the same day. Normally our videos come out a week or two after the time it's filmed. So what we're gonna do is do a special live stream that day and I'll be discussing it on social media so that we can all pop seeds on the 15th of January. And I'm not sure when you're even gonna see this video. So I guess the story is, if you're following the YouTube and you really wanna be fully plugged in, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter at buildaswell.com and make sure you follow our social media because that's how you get the little updates that are sometime between videos. And we want you to be able to pop seeds the same time as us and then watch along and go. So that's what we'll be doing. Thank you for everybody participating. We're gonna turn on the 10 by 10 soon. This will be running on autopilot. We'll jump in there, we'll pop seeds. We're gonna set up the tray to grows. We're gonna set up the four by four bed, like lots to do. So thanks for following. And until next time, I'll see you on the next Build a Soil video.